Hi and welcome to another video. Recently there is a lot of fuss in the social media about DAR's incoming new feature called Records. So how about we have a look into it today. First of all, here is a document, a markdown file, that describes this feature. So you can see over here, Records feature specification, and this is sitting in the that lang account on the GitHub under the language. But let's be back to the records. So motivation here explains why do we need these records and what they are. And to summarize it, let's think of a situation where you have a function and you need to return two different values from this function. In order to do it, you have a couple of options. So for example, you could create a class, this class would have two fields, and then you can return an instance of this class. The other option would be to use something like a list and this list would be of type object, nullable, or even dynamic, and then you can of course put different kinds of objects inside of this list. However, these are not perfect solutions. So in case of using the classes, you have to define class, and then if you are using this class in many different places in your code, then the argument is that this is coupling the code with this class. Then if you are using lists or other collections with dynamical object type, and even if you are using some kind of an inheritance for the different kinds of data that you want to return from your function, then you still have to later check what type is the value later on, or at least convert it or cast to a type that you want to have. And this is prone to errors because someone could return something else and then your casting will not work. This guy, Bob, in the motivation over here also explains another case. So for example, if you are using this feature.wait and you are giving it a couple of different async functions which return different types, then you will also have to cast them later on. And this is a little bit of a pain. So records are supposed to help us with this kind of cases. So in introduction, they also introduced you to this concept of tuple. So it's basically the same thing as a record. Just in a tuple, you don't have a named parameter. So for example, here is a tuple, then you have first parameter, which is a string, then you have some integer and you have some boolean. And you can return it all together from a function without specifying any class or anything like that. And then the second option is to have a record and a record then here has named fields. So you have named number, which is 123, you have the named string and another named string. What the Dart team went for is to have just a record that combines these two ideas. So you can have both unnamed and named arguments in your record. Here is an example of it and you can see that you can have one which is unnamed and you have named parameter A and then you also don't have to have any like special order over here. Here you can see how we define a record. It's basically very similar to how the list of arguments of a function is done. We also have this rounded brackets over here and over here, and in between of them we are including our parameters, well, I don't know what to call them, let's call them parameters, like 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then in this sentence over here they mention that a record is a subtype of an object, so like almost anything else in Dart, and then also it implements hash code and equals already out of the box for you. So what is the record? Now we can go quickly to a definition before we continue with how to get actually the values out of it. So the definition is actually over here. Let's just read this sentence. Like lists and maps, they let you combine several values into a single object. Unlike other collection types, records are fixed size, first of all, so you cannot add an element to it later on when you created a record. Then heterogeneous, that means it can hold different types and then also it's typed of course. So you have all of the arguments are typed and the record itself has a type. And the next sentence here explains that each element in the record may have a different type and the static type system tracks them separately. So this is what we've seen already. So in one record we can have a string, an integer and basically any other type that we want. Down here in this example you can see we have a record and this record is holding 1, 2, 3 and 4 and then it has both named and unnamed arguments. In order to access them, with the named arguments it's easy, because we just type the name argument. For example, we access record.a and it prints us 2 because a is equals to 2. And then if we want to access the unnamed parameters, we have to use this $0.1 and depends how much parameters you will have, this many of $0.1 will be available over there. Now let's go down in the specification over here and we see that we will have something called a record class and the record class refers to the built-in class defined in the Dart core. So this is where the record will be sitting. And again, that it inherits from object. And it also exposes no constructor, which is important thing here. So another important thing over here is that it cannot be constructed 
well, it cannot have a constructor after all. It cannot be also extended. You cannot mix in a record to something. And also you cannot implement a mix in into a user defined class. Every single record that we will define, like for example, this record over here, then implicitly it's already a subtype of the record class. Now here we have a little bit about syntax, but to be honest, I really hate grammars. So let's skip this part, but there is more important information over here. So this grammar is identical for a function call argument list. So again, what we mentioned already, it looks like a function argument list with an optional const at the beginning. This is what we can have. So what we have to keep in mind is that a couple of things will not work with it. First of all, a compile time error over here will be thrown if a record has two or more fields with the same name. So you can only have one parameter called A and not A and another parameter called A. So then you can have also only one positional field and no trading comma. And then defining an expression like this over here is not allowed. So you cannot just type a comma inside and this will not work. And then you also cannot use this kind of field names like hash code, runtime type, no such method or to string. Then you cannot name a field with an underscore. You cannot have a private field well, package private in Dart inside of a record. And finally, if you have something like this over here, this kind of record, so we have two arguments. The first is unnamed, the second is named, and the name is $0. And this is not allowed because the compiler will already, or interpreter, whatever, will assign to the position or post to the first argument this $0 as a name. The next thing is how we define a type of a record. And this is explained here in the record type annotations section. And you can see, for example, if you want to have a type, a record that has three parameters, which will be an integer, then string and boolean, then we can define something like this. So our function would have a return type of this. And you can see they are adding this name parameter over here, which is optional. You don't have to do it. But however, for readability, you can keep this name over here and give it a proper name. If you want to have actual named parameters, then this is the other case over here. So again, we have this rounded brackets over here and inside we have the normal brackets and then we have our named parameters, just like a function. However, we don't have the required field over here. So every field actually will be required in that case. And finally, if we want to mix the parameters in our record, that would be positional and named fields like in this example, then we can see that we can do it by um, just wrapping a couple of them with the para with the brackets and the others leaving without the brackets like this. And then they explain a little bit about ambiguity in the language and how they cope with it. For example, what happens if you have this on keyword and then you have this structure with rounded brackets and some parameters inside. So if you're interested into that, then look into this section about ambiguity. With. Here is a class representation of a record. So if you define a record as this, so we will have uh, some double, then we have some string named name, then you have true and count. Then this is the actual class that holds all the values for this record. And then you can see that we have this getters exposed, which will have the names $0, $1 for unnamed parameters. In the subtyping um, section, there is maybe a small information that is more relevant to package creators. So of course the class record is a subtype of an object and dynamic. And it's also a super type of never. If you don't know what never does, then I have previously released another video about it. Just I will try to link it in the description. Go there and learn about it. Down here, you can see how we could specify that some variable has a type of a record that has one num and one string. And we, then we can assign some value to it like this. And we can, of course, return it from functions. It also can be an argument of a function. All right, but that's everything about the specification. If you are interested more about how it works and how it's defined, then just go to this document and explore it yourself. I'm currently running this Linux subsystem for Windows, which is an Ubuntu. Um, and on this Ubuntu, I've installed a different version of Dart. So let's just go here. Dart version. Here we go. So I'm currently at Dart SDK version 2.19 and this is beta. And this is important because records are currently an experimental feature of Dart and this is only available on 2.19, which is currently in beta. It's not released yet. I have created a small Dart project over here with Dart create command. In the analysis option over here, I had to add analyzer enable experiment records. 
If I wouldn't add it to analyzer, then the analyzer would be constantly pointing out that this is an experimental feature, you shouldn't do it. So let's remove it. Analyzer run, there we go, we have an error over here, which says this requires the records language feature to be enabled. So let's go back, let's put that in, let's save, there we go, the error is gone. And second thing, when I'm running this on Dart project, then I have to also add the experimental flag to the Dart run. And in order to do it, we have this command. So it's ter. So this ter at the beginning just means that it will output the command into a window in Vim. But the more important things is Dart, then run, and then you can see this enable experiment records. There we go. Enable experiment records, and then I also have to specify the file I want to run with Dart. Okay, so how about we actually run this right now, and there we go. We got printed one, and then we got printed two below. And this is because I have this record re defined over here, which has one, and then it has two. So it's two arguments, and then I'm accessing them with this zero and dollar one. so in these two lines. So how about now we have another record, final record two, and let's say that in this record I want to have a named parameter, named first, and let's say that this will be a string, and let's just type in string, and then let's say I have second parameter which is free, and then also how about I have a function over here, and let's see if that will work, and let's say this has one argument of a type integer, let's call it x, let's just print x over here. And there we go. And now let's do something with our record. So let's say that we, well, let's just print it. Why not? So r2 and r2. And now we have first already here listed. So the analyzer already helps us. And we can just use the first. Then let's print again r2. And let's say that we want now to take the second argument that is not named. And there we go. And that's the function that we defined over here. So in order to be able to do that, then we have to actually run the function. Let's give it free. Now let's run it. And here we go. So first we still have this one and two printed from my first record. Then I have printed string, which is just the string that I've set for the first parameter. Oops, over here. And then I've also printed this free. Maybe that's a little bit, um, maybe it's not the best because I have also free defined as this argument over here, which is the first unnamed argument in my record. So let's change it to maybe 54. And now let's run that again. Here we go. So now we can see that what happened over here is that this record is containing this function over here, which takes one argument x and then prints that x. And then over here I can access this function, which will be $1 right now, because this is the second unnamed parameter after this first unnamed parameter free, which is an integer. And then I can run this function. Okay, now let's do something different. Let's have a function that will re return a record. So first we have to define the return type. And let's make it a little bit more complicated than the previous records. Let's say the first argument will be a function with no arguments. And second argument, let's say it will be named argument, and it will be a function that will take an integer, x, whatever, and then let's name it as name, or named, why not. Then we have to call our function, as we usually do. Let's call it some function, and then let's return our record from this function. Return. And again, we define a record like this. First of all, we want to return some function, which doesn't have any arguments. And then we want to have our named function, like so. And this function will have one argument, which is an integer x, and here is somebody. And we don't have any compiler errors right now. So just to confirm later on that everything works over here, let's just print over here, printed x. So just whatever is passed to this function, let's print it. And this function doesn't have anything that is passed to it, so let's just print call it. Like so. Now let's just get rid of all the other records that we have, so it doesn't pollute our output. 
And now let's have some variable. I know xx equals some function. I know the naming is perfect. Okay, now let's try to call the functions that the record xx is holding. So let's say xx dollar zero, and then we have to call it because it's a function. And now let's run it. Call it. There we go. Print it. Secondly, let's call it xx dot, and now without the dollar, just named. And again, we have to run it. And you can see the compiler already have an error over here because it expects that we will give it a parameter. So let's give it one to three. And now let's run this program again. Here we go. First we print called, then we print printed one to three. So what happened here again? This function returns a record over here as a return type that has the first parameter that is unnamed function. Second parameter is a function with one argument that is named named. <laughs> again, maybe not the best naming, but it's named named. And then we return this record. So this record holds two functions and we have to specify that this is named over here as the second parameter. So then when we use this record that is returned from this sum function, then we can access both of this function and run them and then both of them are printing as expected. I hope this introduction to records will help you understand them a little better and when the feature actually comes later to the Dart language, you will be able to use it right away. If you like this content, then please like this video, leave a comment maybe and tell me about what you think about records and whether you really want them in Dart or maybe not. And then also subscribe to my channel so I know that you want more of this kind of content in future. But for now, I code you to death and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.